Provinces have now radically changed how they'll purchase certain pharmaceutical drugs, and they're expecting to save, get this, $100 million in the process. The deal was announced on Friday, and it sounds simple enough. The savings will come from provinces working together when they purchase six widely used generic drugs in bulk. These drugs are used to treat things like high cholesterol, blood pressure and other cardiovascular conditions, depression and other mental health conditions, as well as a variety of gastrointestinal conditions. The question is, is this the beginning of a new era of health care cooperation among the provinces? And are similar agreements the key to addressing the system's woes? To talk about that, we've reached Brad Wall. He's the Premier of Saskatchewan. We've also reached Robert Giz. He's the Premier of PEI. And together they chair the Healthcare Innovation Working Group that was set up to help provinces and territories find and share new ways of meeting health challenges. Good morning to both of you and welcome to the House. Great to be here. Thanks, Kevin. Let me start with you, Premier Wall. How exactly is this deal saving money for the provinces and for the taxpayer? Well, for the first time in the history of Canada, provinces and territories are going to come together and bulk purchase drugs. They've also actually set the price for these six generics that we're announcing here in the last few days. By the way, six generics that represent 20% of uh, the generic drugs used by Canadians. So these are, the, are, are, are used often and prescribed often. Uh, and uh, the, these six will now be purchased at 18% of the brand cost. The average currently across the country would be ranging from 20 to 40% of brand cost. So, uh, you know, it's a savings uh, wherever you are in Canada for the system, for people. And it's a start. We're going to do more. Uh, you know, I have to credit Robert. He, You know, we, we, we trade off being good cop, bad cop, and we chair these meetings of health ministers. And I, my recollection's right. I'm glad he was the bad cop for this one because we didn't have a lot of time. Premiers wanted to show action by April of this year, and this was just last July. And, uh, I, you know, I, Robert was pretty clear that we could get to uh, this number. Six is a big number in that short order, and I was thinking three or four. But So it's a great start, and I think it's a good day for the system. So you have to play bad cop, Premier Gibbs. Why was it so tough to get these six, and how many more can you get if the savings are so obvious? Why wouldn't everyone just jump on board? Yeah, well, it's really a first step. Uh, Both of us work well together in terms of making sure that when we're sitting around and talking with the ministers of health of the country, that we realize that this is coming from really the premier's table, the cough table. And we were given directions last summer to look for three to five generics uh, to be able to come up with a a common price for. Uh, We were able to find six. So, in fact, we did better than what we were asked to do, uh, and this will be an initial step towards uh, looking for more savings uh, into the future, whether or not it's generics or even brand-name drugs. All Uh, right, well, you talk about savings. Is there any agreement amongst the provinces about whether those savings, where they'll go, will they be reinvested into health care? From our perspective in Prince Edward Island, uh, you know, and it's pretty much the same all across the country, is our health care budgets are uh, about 40% of our total budgets. Um, and these budgets are not shrinking. So, you know, these dollars uh, are going to be used, whether or not it's for deficit reduction or new health care programs, but our budgets will continue to grow into the future. So this is allowing us to find dollars so that we can continue to make health care sustainable in our country. But the, the point is it doesn't go directly into health care. In other words, if health care, if dollars for health care are shrinking and, and, and health care needs are growing, should there be a direct tie, save money on drugs here, put it back into health care, not deficit reduction? Well, I think we want to do a little bit of both. I do think we want to make sure, and the premiers have noted that this is uh, this whole process that Robert and I have been asked to co-chair is about better value, better care, but it's also about the sustainability of the system. And if it just grows in expenditure, increases at 8% a year, when it's already 40 to 50% of every provincial budget in the country, we can all see where that, that takes us. But part of it will be reinvested, I'm sure. In our case, you know, we're going to reinvest a, uh, an amount with our pharmacists who... Uh, you know, we'd like to see the scope of practice for pharmacists increase. We've done a little bit about uh, a little bit around that issue already. We want to invest in professional development because there is a, you know, there is a bit of a cost issue, a uh, cost price issue that our pharmacists will face, especially in rural areas. So you'll see a combination of reinvestment, but you'll see, uh, yeah, you'll see governments taking steps to make sure that uh, the health budgets are sustainable going forward. From Prince Edward Island's perspective. 
basically what we're going to do is we're going to divide it up one-third, one-third, one-third. So one-third is going to go towards deficit reduction because we do have a deficit. We need to look to save costs within our system. One-third is going to go towards our drug formulary, and one-third is going to go back to reinvesting in our pharmacies and our rural pharmacies across our province, similar to Saskatchewan, to make it more collaborative for our pharmacies working within our health care system. The group you're both chairing is focused on finding practical solutions to improve the health care system. All right, now you've talked about drugs. Uh, what's next? What's the next thing you're going to look at? Well, I think, first of all, we're going to continue to look at the drug uh, file. We, the industry, the generic industry has been, and they all have their concerns, but they've been cooperative and constructive. They may have suggestions for to find further savings. There may be other drugs. We have a, an effort going on the brand side of things, the brand uh, uh, drug side of things as well. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, we've di- divided up our work into basically three categories, and scope of practice uh, is, is part of that. We are, we've already highlighted in that first report some very specific uh, clinical practice guidelines that are now being implemented across the country that we think are about better care but also can save some money or at least provide better value. And finally, the human resource piece, where we are cooperating and, and looking at opportunities to cooperate further as we deal with, in our case, what is 70% of the health budget, and that's the human resource cost. And uh, and we need to do that together with uh, those uh, those practitioners. So there's lots of work to, to come. Let me ask you one last question about the drugs before I move on. How did the brand companies handle this? Is this a sign that the provinces are tipping very much towards generics and with the low-cost alternatives, is there a lot of pushback? Obviously, someone's going to be losing dollars that were originally going somewhere else before. But uh, from that perspective as well, we did not pick the 18% number out of the year. Uh, it's actually a median number uh, on the international scene. So this is something that pharmacies uh, and our uh, generic producers could have seen coming, um, and we worked collaboratively with them in terms of trying to negotiate this deal. Now, is everyone happy at the end of the day with this deal? No, they're not. And there never really is a deal where everyone's going to say, you know, I- I'm extremely happy with that. But we're going to continue to work collaboratively with the generic uh, producers out there. We want to work with the brand producers. We want to work with our pharmacies. This is about making sure that we bring everyone to the table to try to do the best job we can. What Roberts just said is important because it means that because provinces were not coming together to bulk purchase, Canadians were paying more for generic drugs than other, uh, uh, for certainly for these six, than other people, you know, people around the world. And that's why we need to be working together wherever we can and, and why Robert and I, I think, are hopeful about this succeeding in the, in the long term. One other issue that's emerged this week. Uh, Bradwell, you spoke to Cabinet Minister John Baird and you said, quote, there'll be no special deals on resource revenue sharing. What did you mean by that? What message are you sending to First Nations? Sure. Well, we didn't just speak to Minister Baird about that. Uh, we actually, this was dealt with very uh, uh, significantly in the last provincial election, which was just over a year ago. It was actually, I think it formed a part of the ballot question. There was a lot of debate in the election. The opposition, New Democrats, wanted or pr- were proposing a formulaic resource revenue sharing deal for First Nations. Um, our position is clear. As long as we happen to be the duly elected government of this province, uh, we we see that natural resource revenue as being shared today by everyone. Every time we build a school, every time we invest in a hospital, every time we build a highway or pay off debt, people in this province benefit from that. Uh, and so there will not be a special deal for any group, any particular group. Now, we do want to invest more and will be and are in partnerships with First Nations that focus on training and employment. And I hope that's what Idle No More comes to mean at a provincial perspective. I know there are treaty issues and concerns with federal legislation. In our province, Idle No More, the, the founders have conducted themselves very constructively, I should say. Uh, and we hope that from a provincial perspective, that while it means these things federally, that here it might mean a greater engagement on both sides, on ours too, to focus on results-based initiatives around training and employment. Because, you know, on saskjobs.ca this morning, there were 10,000 jobs available, and our Aboriginal unemployment is, is much higher than non-Aboriginal unemployment. So we've got to do more. But so that's we don't a, that's a strong message. Is necessarily the answer. So that's a strong message to the chiefs because that was top of the agenda for many chiefs. They want better revenue, resource sharing on revenues, and um, obviously you're sending a message there. Uh, one other thing, Premier, while you and a group of U.S. governors wrote a letter to President Barack Obama asking him to approve the proposed Keystone XL pipeline. There's a lot of opponents to that. Can you give us an idea? What did you say to them? 
Well, we just said in a letter to the president that we think the project's good for, for both countries. You know, in the case of, uh, of Canada, it means about 140,000 jobs, according to studies, over the life of that project, $600 million added to the GDP. Uh, there's an important uh, point where Keystone and other pipelines that get our energy to the coasts will actually remove or uh, lower and then eventually remove the differential between West Texas Intermediate. That's the price that Saskatchewan people who own the oil resource get paid today. Uh, $15 more than that, or $18 more than that, depending on the day, is the Brent price. That's the price Canada should be getting as an emerging energy power for its oil wherever possible. For us in Saskatchewan, that means $300 million more in revenue, and for the industry, it means billions more. So there's interest on both sides here for the economy and uh, for energy independence for the continent. And uh, we had 10 governors in the, the Democratic governor of Montana also in the press release indicate support for the position that we hope this is approved by the administration. In how long? Nebraska, probably in about two weeks, early February, will report uh, whether or not they support Keystone. We're hopeful they will. I'm optimistic. We think that's the last roadblock, and we're hopeful then that soon thereafter there would be a decision from the administration. Well, I thank you both for that. Uh, Premier Wall, Premier Giz, good to have you back on the House. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Evan. Brad Wall is the Premier of Saskatchewan, and Robert Giz is the Premier of PEI. 